Thanks, boy, yourself, buddy. Not bad, thanks. Uh, tell me, what's happening with your young nephew, Bill Oh, uh, you know, uh, this boy's been over there for quite a few weeks now, uh, close to eight weeks, um, sparring uh, Canelo uh, in the lead-up to the Triple G fight. Uh, they spar every the second day, um, you know, three days a week. Uh, Now, Bill Al's going to be fighting uh, over there. On, can you tell us when and where? Yeah, mate. Bill Al's fighting uh, on the 13th of September, two days before the main fight at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I know you're going, but the show is going to be, uh, you know, it's a Golden Boy promotion, uh, going to be shown live on ESPN. Um, and at this stage, um, you know, they've had an opponent on standby for a while, but they've, they, they've been trying to secure some decent names for him, and, and when I say decent names, they've been knocking the fight back, you know, you know, boy, you've helped me match many a fights, and you know the hassles that I have with trying to match, yeah. match me out, it's been, it, 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 it's been no easier for them, you know, really? the, the likes, <laughs> oh, no, look, because it's an eight-rounder, you can imagine that some of the bigger names want a title fight, but it's an eight-rounder, it's his introduction to the US market, you know, the likes of Marco Antonio Pyramid, who's, you know, 25, 16 knockouts, four losses. Yeah, four losses, six stop once. He's only lost to the likes of James DeGaulle, Sakio Pico by a majority division for the vacant WBC title. You know, he had a draw as bad as Jack and he turned it down. You know, he turned it down. Some of the past runs, you know, 36 wins, 27 knockouts. You know, five losses only ever been stopped once. You know, top decisions to the likes of Gilles Cesar Chavez Jr. And David Lemaine, he turned it down. You know, so there's a few names that are just like, I'm sure they'll get, you know, they, just, they were trying, hoping for a name, whether they can secure it on this occasion or not. Um, you know, uh, with two weeks to go, is yet to be seen, but they, he will be on on the 13th of September. Okay, um, at the Hard Rock Casino in Vegas. At the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Mate. Yeah. You'll be there, you'll be there. Now, I, I know you'll be there, you've already told me. I haven't told my wife yet, I'm going to Al, now she's found down on radio. How <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to bring this up. Are you going out or not, mate? Oh, good on you. You know I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't go uh, um, there are many, uh, uh, some family, uh, family circumstances that prevented me from going on this occasion. I was blessed to, to have been over there for the early part of the camp with um, seeing some great sparring between between um, Canelo and, and, and Bilal, and let me tell you, it's, it's, it's really good sparring to watch. You know, the intensity, the, uh, you could even be, uh, you know, a big drop. You know, the, there's a, a fair bit of respect for the power that both fighters, fighters have. Both have to sort of start very smart, so, and, and you know, uh, pick their shots. And, you know, um, the Raiders, they just love Bilal's uh, walk forward. You know, I can um, imagine. Uh, his style and, and, and the power that he brings with it. And, you know, he, he's a smart fighter when he has to be. And, you know, that, that should prepare Canelo quite well for the for the style that Triple G is going to bring. And they love his work ethic. So much so, Paulie, that um, yeah. immediately following this fight, uh, Bilal won't be coming back to Australia. He'll be really? staying. He'll be going straight into another training camp in Mexico uh, at Guadalajara. Fantastic. Uh, with, with, with the Reynosos, you know, and um, obviously Mick's over there at the moment. Uh, his dad, you know, uh, co-training him in the lead up to this fight. And we'll, we'll keep working in with a, with a view of uh, hopefully uh, securing something half decent towards the end of the year. I bet you will. Uh, will we ever see Bill L uh, back at Club Punch Bowl? <laughs> well, you know, the MGM of Sydney Boxing or the MGM oh, Australian it. Boxing Club Punch Bowl, mate. I, I, you know, I love that venue. It's a great venue, great atmosphere. 
you know, whether we end up seeing him back there on, on, on a neutral corner fight promotions or not is yet to be seen. Um, uh, but look, he's, he, he plans on giving it a, a really good go over there. Um, so, uh, look, we, uh, um, you know, boy, you and I talk a lot. We, the other way, is trying to keep going. We take it one fight at a time. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you know. Nothing happens in boxing until it happens. Could you say that again? Say that again, Al. I love this saying. <laughs> no, nothing happens in boxing until it happens, Paulie. We, tr- we, we just keep it, keep it moving forward. Day by day. Obviously, a goal in sight. Um, hopefully, uh, God willing, he gets through this next fight in an impressive manner, and then we move on to the next training camp. Just stay there and just keep, to, keep developing, keep developing with, uh, with our own essays and... And, you know, um, look forward to, to, to trying to get him some decent fights over there. Jeez, it's, the it sounds promising, doesn't it? Well, I'll be, uh, hopefully I'll be at ringside for the Golden Boy promotions when Bill Alakaway fights. Uh, hey, I was going to say, no wonder nobody wants to fight him now. We've had him in uh, training him. Uh, look, it just, you know... It just brings another angle to the training, you know, um, always developing, always learning, you know, it's, it's a great experience, um, you know, the teams are working well together for the best interest of Villa, uh, exactly. which I like, um, and you know, um, you know, you can't ask for much more, they've just seen, they've seen a product they know they can work yeah. with, they've already worked with power, they see another kid with power, yeah. they know they can work with it, so, um, you know, we just got to... Between the teams, and we can we can do what's best. Okay. Yeah. Got a question, and boy, and, and as you know, um, he recently came up with an alias online. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell us about that. Uh, it was a bit funny because uh, Victor Organov, who used to uh, uh, yeah. train with me for a very oh. brief moment before he left Sydney to go, oh. to, um, sort of online, suggested. Uh, AK-47, as you know, there was a lot of other names, Bombs Away, you know, Take Her Away, you know, uh, The Silent Assassin, The Smiling Assassin, but Bilal uh, ended up liking AK-47, so he'll go in, that's obviously the, uh, that's obviously the assault, the Russian assault rifle, you know, yes, it is the Kalashnikov, uh, fires uh, 600 rounds per minute, you know. Yes. Is that a good is that a good name for a Lebanese Aussie, mate? <laughs> oh, look, it's, it's funny, you know. You talk it about is funny. you know, uh, Bilal, born, raised Sydney, Australia. You know, um, with an alias of a, a, a Russian assault rifle, um, backed by the Mexicans. So yeah, I, I like it. No, that's good. You better win the charge, okay? I like that. <laughs> it should be interesting. It should be interesting. And one last question, uh, Al, before you go, um, we've. With your nephew being in camp with Eddie Rana, so it's taken a bit of uh, pressure off you now, hasn't it? Because you, hasn't it? Because you were the man behind yourself. You've done it. You've done a lot of work, and you still do behind the scenes trying to get your your nephew um, matched and uh, get a good deal for him here and there. And uh, you've told me many a times you wouldn't be involved in boxing if, if it wasn't for Bill Al, your nephew. It's taken the heat off you a bit, Al. Or you're still in there. Absolutely, because obviously, um, you know, he's in good hands over there. Sure obviously is. Still, uh, can sort of train, co-manage, and and still have some involvement. Uh, but the heat of trying to find someone, boy, it's hard to make big fights happen in Australia for a decent, for a decent quick. These guys, you know, are, uh, hats off to all Australian professional boxers, you know, trying yeah. to make it because it's a exactly. tough thing in Australia, mate. It I mean, sure you know, is. You, you want to put food on the table. Some of these guys, that is their only job. You know, that is his only job for the past seven years. I remember back when we, when you first wanted to go down this journey, um, his dad and I said, mate, just go yourself a job at Macca's. You get 20 bucks an hour. <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> you know, um, eventually, you know, he was, hung, he was keen, you know, his dad said, if you really, really want to fight, he was, I think, walking around at about 88 kilos and dropped into 72, and I'll get you a fight. You know, the kid did it within about a six-month period. Yeah, wow. So, so you know, he, he's keen. So, since then, uh, that's when I started supporting him, and I'll yeah. continue to support him as best I can. It's, it's all about just making sure he gets the best advice and the best way forward. Yeah, yeah. Well said. Well said, Uncle Al. Well, we'll leave it at that. We've gone over time. Thank you so much for coming on. That was a very interesting interview. I know I've got a, I've got a, I've got a few more listeners these days, Al. I know that for a fact. Someone just texted oh, me. Well, mate, you, you, you enjoy, you enjoy Las Vegas. You know, uh, <laughs> be sure to do another radio interview from over there with Bilal when you get there. Okay. And I look we'll forward do. to catching up with you when, when, when you get back, mate. Will do. Thanks a lot, Alan. All right, buddy. Cheers. You have a good day. See you, mate. Bye-bye. See you, mate. Bye.
And that was Alan Ackaway. Some very interesting news 